Hello, everyone. Oh, there we go. We're live now. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our webinar today. Thank you for joining. People start heading in. Uh, Write a sticky message up here. Where? Let's see. Where's everyone logging in from? You connecting from today. Pennsylvania, Michigan. Hey, Erica. Seeing you here, Alexa. San Juan, Puerto Rico. Bienvenidos, bienvenidos. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Uh, we're going to give people another minute here uh, or so. Robin, Jacksonville, Florida. Welcome. Hi, Chelsea. Taylor. Kenzie, Boston. Hello, Jill. South Dakota. Matt, you're joining us from? Matt, can you? There you go. Oh, yeah. Me, Matt. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, bro, I'm like, who are you talking to in the chat? There's no Matt. Uh, yeah, no. So I'm outside of Worcester, Massachusetts. Nice. And Ashley? New Hampshire, Sea Coast. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you, everyone, for joining. I see there's still going to be people um, joining our webinar today. Um, but I think we should get started. We have about 45 minutes. Uh, we do want to leave some time at the end for questions for the audience. Um, so uh, let's kick this off. Um, so I want to welcome everyone. This is a very uh, exciting um, opportunity and event. Uh, first and foremost, Ashley, thank you. Uh, for partnering with us uh, to do this event today. Uh, we started working with our eSource solution. Um, it's been uh, in the testing and also um, in the market for already, uh, I would say, close to a year. And um, having you today to share your experience, not only with Study Team eSource, but to share your experience with that transition from paper source to eSource, um, it's very important. There's a lot of um, conversations that we have on a daily basis with sites. Uh, and there's at times concerns about making that transition. The clinical research industry is very used to working with paper. So hopefully by the time we um, we leave today, uh, we can share with the audience what was your experience um, and give them some insights as to how they can transition. So Thanks for having me. Yeah, uh, thank you again. So um, everyone, Ashley Morris uh, is the lead uh, clinical research coordinator at Seacoast Kidney and Hypertension Specialist. Um, she's focused primarily on research in the kidney and hypertension space. Um, she does it all at the site, so we work very closely. Uh, so I know she takes care of a lot of different things with her team, uh, but she's responsible for everything from trial feasibility, uh, startup, all the way to close out and all the path in between. Uh, her work has led uh, her research practice to be acknowledged by both CROs and sponsors for delivering exceptional high quality uh, performance and often being a top recruiter for um, her trials, of the site trials. Um, along with me today, I have my colleague who I have the utmost pleasure of working with uh, on a daily basis, uh, Matt Glazier. He's a director of sales at One Study Team and he helps organizations leverage study team a study, team, a study team products uh, to accelerate enrollment, increase revenue for sites, improve efficiency uh, and accuracy for their trials, and uh, most importantly, to ease the burden for the site and the investigator oversight uh, as well. Uh, myself, I see a lot of you that I uh, work with here in the webinar today, but for those that don't know me, uh, I support the implementation of study team solutions for sites, and my goal is to help them uh, help sites globally implement study team uh, solutions 
uh, for their organizations to help them align study team with their internal processes. Uh, and my end goal is to help the sites and researchers that are partnered with uh, to help them meet their enrollment goals much faster, reduce the trial execution time, and reduce the abundant, uh, the redundant work um, that is often present in, in, in research. Um, Seacoast Kidney, um, the organization that Ashley uh, works for uh, and works with, um, is located in New Hampshire, as you mentioned. And for the past 11 years or so, Seacoast has offered many uh, kidney-centric uh, clinical trials, uh, providing volunteers with innovative, uh, not yet available to the public and state-of-the-art care uh, in treatments. Um, the research practice is led by Dr. Joshi. Uh, he's a board-certified uh, nephrologist and internal uh, medicine doctor uh, who has been conducting research for over uh, two decades. So um, greetings to uh, Dr. Joshi and Meg, who also works with you at the practice. So to kick this off, I want to turn it over to Matt. Uh, he's going to give us a quick introduction to a study team, uh, study team e-source, and then um, we'll jump here to have the co our conversation with Ashley. Great. Thanks, Well, Appreciate it. Uh, let me share some slides here. And, um, you know, first, you know, just want to, you know, thank you for having me. I appreciate everyone joining as well. Um, so just a, a little bit about, you know, study team or one study team uh, as an organization. We are a provider of cloud-based solutions. We work with sponsors, sites, CROs. And in 2017, we launched a study team for sites, which many of you who are attending this call might be familiar with, right? It's our HIPAA GDPR compliant cloud-based software. It's really designed to streamline the clinical enrollment process and the communication between sites and sponsors. But really what I like about this slide is the fact that over 8,000 sites have trusted us for helping them with their clinical enrollment process. And as part of that work, we continually had these conversations and you know, we continued to build out capabilities such as e-source, patient messaging, site financials, and more to really better address the challenges that sites face with all of our products and services designed with their workflow in mind. Additionally, all of these modules are designed to work together, right, to further the effort of streamlining the process. And so when we talked to sites, right, about three quarters of them, you know, about 74% told us that it was burdensome, right? It was difficult to create these source templates and they'd appreciate help. And I think Ashley will speak to that too, right? Um, in fact, most of these sites are adding additional QA steps to ensure that they're capturing data appropriately, uh, which creates an additional burden for sites, both in time and in labor. It's also difficult to document everything in, you know, in an attributable manner, right? To ensure that it's legible, contemporaneous, difficult to capture original data in one place and to ensure accuracy. Uh, really, all of the things that Alcoa requires. And then, you know, study startup can also be delayed due to the preparation of these source templates because it takes so much time. And then, so, you know, we also know that, um, you know, according to the FDA, the three most common uh, findings during an audit are missed assessments, missed labs and study procedures performed incorrectly, right? And so this is one of the reasons why, you know, sites have started transitioning to paper, but 65% still use paper. And this can become, present some issues, right? Because when your protocols are all paper-based, it can be really easy to miss documenting a step or incorrectly entering information, especially as these protocols increasingly get more and more complex. So when you combine those three most audit findings, right, that are inherent to relying on paper, it's not a surprise that the FDA is actually recommending that sites move to e-source. And so because of this guidance, th there's going to be a push to get sites to fully transition to e-source uh, in the coming years based on the benefit it provides, like uh, reduction of data errors or protocol deviations. Since e-source, unlike paper, can have these built-in protections to ensure that there are no missteps. Um, it can also provide additional guidance to ensure that study procedures are performed correctly. You know, but there's also, you know, the investigator oversight, right? It's critical, right? But it can also be difficult. So PIs are the ones who signed the FDA form 1572s. So they've specifically agreed to personally conduct the trial or to supervise those aspects of the trial that they did not personally conduct. But with paper, that oversight can be difficult, right? Especially if you have multiple sites or you're working on multiple trials, eSource allows you to have one central area to have a, an easier way to have that complete oversight. And so this is why we created eSource for sites. And I will hand things back over to Will, if I can figure out how to stop the share. There we go. 
Well, you're on mute. Thank you. Before we get started, um, I would love to engage with the audience. Um, we would like to take a quick poll here. Uh, in the first one, we would like to know uh, where do you stand at the moment? So we're curious to know if your site has a need source solution, uh, if you already collect um, source data on paper looking to transition to eSource, uh, or uh, are you a site that doesn't use eSource or plan to use it in the, uh, in the near future? And for the, um, so we are answering here. Um, we'll do a second poll. I think we'll share here the results here in a second. The second uh, survey that we want to do is why did you join today's webinar? So we want to know if you're interested in transitioning from paper source uh, data collection to uh, e-source, or if you want to learn more about study team e-sources solution, uh, or we're, you're not transitioning to e-source, but you're curious about how it's helping sites, or are you just here to learn about research in general? Okay, awesome. Are you able to see the results in your end, Matt? Yeah, <clears throat> sorry, it's really interesting. It's, um, I'll give you know, a couple more seconds and then we'll close it out and we'll, we'll take okay. a look. But um, what's really interesting is that, you know, for why did you join today's webinar? There's no like, consistent, there's no front runner, right? There's, there's a lot of reasons why people are here today. Um, and then there's a mix between, you know, I either have or, or you're looking to transition to eSource. So I'm going to close out the polls and I believe we can look at the responses now. Okay. Will you be able to see those? Yes, absolutely. Okay. So we have uh, most of the audience is looking to learn about eSources, uh, Study Team's eSource solution, uh, and others that are curious about how it's helping sites uh, and to learn research about research in general. And for the second one, uh, we have most sites uh, either have an e-source solution or are looking to transition. So thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, great. So we wanted everyone to be involved, but let's get uh, to speak with our uh, guest of honor, Ashley. Um, so uh, let's get started. So Ashley, um, again, thank you uh, for the opportunity to speak with you today. I know um, the audience is going to take a lot away from here today. Uh, there's a lot of benefit from your experience and what you've done so far. Um, so uh, I know it's going to be a very insightful conversation. So I'd like to start uh, to talk about your site's operations. Um, we did give a brief introduction into your role in the organization as well as your site. Um, but can you talk to us about the type of trials that you're running at your site at the moment um, and a bit about your day-to-day -day operations? Yeah, so primarily, like you'd mentioned, we um, have been involved in um, chronic kidney disease related trials. I've done a couple of anemia trials. Um, it seems the last like six to eight months, we've been approached for some hypertension trials. We've got four hypertension trials going or going to be starting. Um, so that's kind of exciting for us. Um, and then as far as day to day, it's so very different. Um, today we had a patient visit and I've got a meeting later after this one. I've got some invoicing to do tomorrow morning. I'll do a budget, two patient visits, um, a meeting with a sponsor. So it is, um, it, it's, it's a lot in one day. Um, so when we've got those patient visits and the source collection, anything to make that process seamless <laughs> and efficient um, really is, is impactful for, for me, I would imagine for everybody. And you know, one thing that is consistent with what you're saying in regards to other sites is that we hear this from um, a lot of the coordinators, uh, typically overwhelmed. Um, there's a lot of different things that you have to take care of uh, during the day, whether it is the patient visits or even if you're not involved in the, fi um, in the um, financing process. So you are involved in that process, but you may have to report back the activities that you're doing and having, going, having to go back into the paper uh, see what you completed in order to report that to your financial department. All these activities can become burdensome. So um, we work very closely. So I, I, I know your day-to-day -day operations 
um, in seeing patients. A lot of procedures you have to hospital that's also combined in many of those processes. Um, so it could be it could be complex. Now, um, as you're working on your day to day operations for your trials, I know you have defined some um, you have established some well defined processes um, that have led your site to be recognized by CROs and sponsors, as I mentioned earlier, for delivering uh, exceptional work. Uh, high quality performance, and you're often being a, being a top recruiter for those trials. Can you share with our guests or talk more about what have been some of the biggest successes that you had with the clinical trials that you've participated in? Yeah, so I think um, the partnership with one study team in general has been quite beneficial for us. Um, when I started, we didn't really have a clinical trial database, if you will. And now that we've got that within one study team, um, that usually will be at some point throughout every single day, we we visit um, our like patient portal, if you will, within one study team to find out, do we have patients we need to contact? What do we have coming up? Just to kind of organize. Um, patients are our very most important part of our job. So to make sure that our day-to-day -day activities are centered around their needs, um, that has been quite helpful um, and allowed us to to really start recruiting um, more patients. Yeah, and and that that initiative that that you took with Meg at the site, <laughs> building those databases, um, was actually a great um, great process to establish because again, the goal was to accelerate that enrollment and improve that, uh, or I wouldn't say improve but elevate that recruitment. Um, and, and I remember when we started working together to establish the fields that you wanted to add to the system and the capabilities of filtering and so on. Um, but it was the sites initiative um, to do this. And, and, and I can see how that um, elevated your processes. Um, now, I, I want to shift it over to Matt um, because I know Matt has some questions in regards to the uh, challenges as well, because it is great to talk about success. Uh, but talking about challenges, it's also important to see where we learn, what we learn from that. So I know, Matt, you had a couple questions. Did. <clears throat> Thanks, Will. And again, thank you, actually, for, for answering our questions here. Um, like Will mentioned, like, it's important to talk about challenges, right? Because that's where you learn the most, right? Um, and that's how we came together, right? To help you solve a challenge you were facing with the way you're capturing that source data. Um, but can we talk a little bit about the challenges um, that you were experiencing with your source data collection when you were using paper? Yeah, so my my whole background before research was nursing. Your documentation in nursing is very different than in clinical research. Um, you dump your information into one place and that's kind of it. And then with research, you've got your source docs and then your EDC and your protocols sometimes seem to be ever changing. So I would find that sometimes we'd get a protocol amendment and then our paper source docs, you, I would go to update those, but maybe I couldn't get through all you know, 28 visits that the trial requires and then forgetting where you've left off and then printing source docs for use that you didn't update. Um, we've had some trials that even for like inclusion, exclusion, um, the blood pressure parameters will change. Um, you'll have, we've had additional visits for one of our trials. We had a trial we were um, a year and a half underway with, and then the sponsor added um, or changed a telephone visit to an on-site visit, and then added um, two additional in-person visits, um, which doesn't sound like a lot, right? Like, okay, two extra visits, whatever. But then when you realize you've got to create the documents for that, and then go back in and just update your headers, <laughs> which is just very time consuming and, and kind of tedious. And I find that when you're doing that very redundant work, um, it seems that that can be when you are more apt to, to make the mistakes. My best self is in the morning. I can knock stuff out very, very well in the morning. But if I save something until, you know, three o'clock, four o'clock, or, you know, I'm at home putting my little girl to bed and then I'm gonna tackle this project, probably not my best time to be working on on that stuff, but there's only so many hours in a day. So 
Um, the other thing that that we had found, um, like with certain lab value changes or blood pressure parameter changes, though one really cool thing with, um, well, one of the very cool things with eSource is that you guys can set like flags for us. So if there is a blood pressure that we document and it's out of range, the system will just kind of let you know um, or give you a parameter. So that that's pretty helpful. And I think that that's helpful also um, for for somebody new to research. So we are a very small site um, in, I've been here for almost three years and we have had four, three research assistants and then one additional coordinator over that time. Um, and people have, I mean, wonderful people, but you know, life happens um, and for any reason they have to, you know, step away. So at times it was just me and Dr. Joshi and then some of our sub who would step in if, you know, Dr. Joshi's on vacation. Um, but when you've got somebody new and you really want to get them up to speed um, and they get used to something and then a protocol change when maybe they're not used to the research world, um, those little things that feel so small can be so impactful for somebody new and, and really improves the, um, the learning experience. I think too, when we have um, our patient visits with our old source, um, I don't know if not necessarily errors, but when you've got 40 pages of a source document and you're flipping through, you have to wonder what experience is that for your participant? Um, you know, when you're going to the to the doctor, are they how do you feel if the provider's flipping through all these pages and trying to, you know, make sure they've got everything answered and really keep it together? I go to the dermatologist and they have a laptop and they enter in a little bit of data and it just seems seamless. Um, but, you know, when you've got that with your participants, um, it can look kind of messy and sloppy and nobody wants that, especially when you're dealing with someone's health. Wow. So you've identified a lot of challenges that you had. With well, thank you. <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, and it's not unique. Like we hear that a lot. And it's funny you mentioned the version control of, of just switching to, um, you know, a, a, a different protocol amendment and all the work that, that has to go into that when it doesn't, from the outside, may seem like it's that much. But right. when reality hits, it, it is. So at what point did you decide, okay, we need to make a change from collecting data on paper to uh to resource yeah so it was probably after the very first trial i ever had to create source data like from scratch and i said okay this is awful and i told you matt that i would rather clean toilets than create source documents um it, it's just i think my brain like i just i love the clinical aspect of my job i love being with patients and and conducting the visits. And when you sit for a whole entire day to create your, your source documents, it's just, it's important, but it doesn't feel like you're doing very important work. It's, it's, um, doesn't make you love your job, at least for me. Um, so that, um, and then also we, we do, we've, um, work with a CRO that sometimes will provide source documents to the sites for trials. Um, they provided some really awesome source documents and then some that you're just like who created this and then you get frustrated and so you want to do it yourself but you don't you can't find the time to then go back and do all of it so um yeah it was just like a, a whole bunch of frustration i think that that landed me with you guys so thank you <laughs> well that makes a lot of sense thanks thanks ashley and and and, and we know that like, change is hard right you know people have been using paper for a long, long time. And there's going to be concerns, right, about making that change. So uh, talk about like, maybe some of the concerns that you and your team, quite frankly, yeah. had uh, about transitioning from paper to e-source. Yeah, so I think for me, um, not having the control, having somebody else do this, and you just very much hope that it's it's going to be everything that they promise it's going to be, um, which you guys really delivered on that. I, I think that was my biggest concern um, was, OK, we're doing this. We're going to use it. But is it actually going to be all that it sounds? I think I even said, like, this sounds too good to be true. Um, and it's 
it's been such a positive experience. And there's a, a comment in the chat about uploading paper source to study team, which loads up the work and makes the whole deeper. And yes, but that I think is a very, um, cause we're in the middle of that now. We have a trial that we've been in for um, almost two years now. So we've got some, you know, definitely some documents to, to upload. Um, I think what is what how we kind of navigate that is we upload those to uh, like a network file on our computer and then just pick away as we have time. Um, I do think it's one of those things that if you put the time in up front, you're not always going like you're going to get rid of those documents. They're going to be uploaded. Um, so I, I can see that, you know, for us, that is still a process um, that we're working through. But just the benefit to having the e-source and then our patient binders in one study team, um, it, it's very much worth it for us. Excellent. Yeah. And and to answer that question, too, is like, yeah, I mean, it's, it is a process, right? Like, it's not I wish it were like I honestly wish it were a light switch. Yeah. Um, but but it's not right. It's almost like a dimmer. Like you, you, you can progress, progress over time. Um, but it sounds like you had some le legitimate concerns um, about moving and what like what 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 helped you overcome those concerns right about that transition and I think I'll answer part of the question in the chat too yeah so I think what um, the e-source the one study team you guys are so involved so it never it, it never seemed like we were going to be stuck without support. Um, I think the like building of that relationship before we really jumped all the way in was very helpful. Um, I know, you know, Will has been instrumental in the success of this for our site. Um, we, every question we have, we shoot an email off. Will, can you do this? Will, can you change this? Will, you know, this looks great. Um, and it's, I think when you develop those relationships and you you can tell that one study team wants the site to succeed. You guys are such cheerleaders for us, I feel. So just having that, um, like a all hands on deck kind of approach is, is, I don't know, worth everything. And uh, I do want to add one thing here, like, and I don't want to embarrass Will, but so I was talking to uh, a site and like, hey, you know, we've worked with vendors where it feels like they're cheerleaders on the sideline. That's not Will. Um, <laughs> no. That is not Will. Will does such an excellent job of, of working with our customers. It, it, it's truly, um, we're, we're blessed to have Will here. So, Thank you both for the kind words. Uh, I appreciate that. Um, one of the things that, and I think actually in some of the conversations we had when I came to one study team, one of the things that I really liked about this organization was that I saw the true commitment to helping our sponsors and sites to succeed. Um, and you said it yourself, but, um, and I know there's probably other people in the chat that have worked with us. Uh, we're constantly in conversations. We're asking, how do we do this better? Give me the recommendation. Uh, we have a lot of people behind this that also, that also, uh, put a lot of effort into this. So David, who you know, um, that we work very closely with the eSource team. So there's a lot of people supporting us. Um, but yes, the, the, the idea is to develop the true partnership. So I'm glad um, we were talking about this because I, I know I see uh, Jessica also mentioning how long does it take to get started? Uh, and, and I think this kind of drives to the next question. Um, we worked uh, on the implementation together uh, for your site. And we continue to work on, on new projects. So can you talk to us about your implementation experience? Uh, and what steps did you take internally uh, to make the transition smooth for everyone in the site? Uh, could be from that onboarding to, uh, to that whole transition period. Yeah, so I think when we started, it was just me and then Meg joined us in June if I'm remembering correctly. Okay, so just trying to figure out who we onboarded. Um, and then Dr. Joshi. Um, so the process has been, I actually set Meg up with you. So 
So you could kind of show her the way. Um, and then when I would do visits with the patients, she would just kind of be present for those. Um, as far as with, um, there's a question in the chat about informing participants, patients of the data policies. So yeah, so when, um, I mean, it was very obvious, I think, to some of our patients who have been with us for any amount of time, um, and we actually had patients comment about like how um, much faster the visits seemed once we switched to eSource um, because of the, um, just the, you're not flipping through papers. You're not, oh, hey, let me just make sure. Um, okay, we're done, but let me just flip through all of these pages to make sure that we've captured everything. Um, so the patients were very aware um, and we let them know. I think too, because like whenever you're, in with a patient and you're conducting any sort of um, interview, data collection, what have you, it's important if you're not looking at the patient, like if you're looking at a screen, let them know what you're doing, why you're doing that. Um, and so I did let the patients know like, hey, we've got this new um, system. You are coded by your study ID number, but this is where we're going to start um, storing all of our study visit data and asked if they had any questions um, and nobody had questions. Um, but I think, Will, you were able to help in the beginning with the, um, with like an SOP, I think, that we had created. Right. Um, so Will was able to, to help with that just so that, you know, we did have everything from like compliance and we were able to like answer questions, especially if um, monitors came or we had any sort of um, like a sponsor audit if something were to come up. Um, that you, we just had the documentation to back us up. Um, and somebody asked about how it gets, how long it took to get started. Um, I will say that Will works faster than I do. Um, <laughs> when documents are created, I, I don't do have those things probably to do uh, on my day. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? I probably have less things to do on my day than you do. I'm sure that's not the case, but um, I will sometimes get just the email reminder like, oh, hey, Ashley, are you, you know, how are you doing with the quality control check of the source docs that were created for, you know, this trial? Um, and I'll say, well, I've had 40 patient visits in the last two days, so I'm not there yet. I'm very sorry. But it's nice to, um, the, it's just nice for the support and that you're kind of keeping an eye on us and making sure that we have what we need. Um, I think also not everybody's always able to ask for help or ask for what they need. So for you to reach out, I mean, I don't have a problem with that, but for you to reach out if, if you know, a coordinator, you know, didn't want to bother you, um, it's just nice that you're, that you're there. Um, otherwise, for implementation, um, you have just been completely available for, you've asked, you know, when we went live with our source, with eSource, um, what time was our patient visit? If there were any um, issues at all, we could call you. So it was, it was pretty smooth. Well, thank you for that. And yeah, it's a, it's a partnership. And I know even at times when you have to QA something, because it is part of the process, at the end of the day, you're the one collecting the data. So you want to ensure that, what you are, um, the, the the templates that we provide you obviously have to be aligned with your expectations. Um, but we do work very closely with the sites that we work with. I, I know in cases we had one where we had the amendment of the trial right in the middle when we were implementing. So we came up with a, um, uh, with a game plan of starting out with some QR coded uh, paper source um, that is easy to scan into study team eSource for your screening visits and then moving into um, eSource creation once we have the CRF guidelines in place. So at the end of the day is that partnership. Um, and part of it is that communication. And I, and I have to also praise you for that because um, even when you can't, you always communicate back and say, well, I have this visit, I'll get to it tomorrow. Um, so I would say that it's been a great partnership uh, on both ends. Um, so I, I want to... Um, Turn it over to Matt because I know he had some questions uh, specifically about study team um, eSource. Uh, and uh, so I'll turn it over to you, Matt. Yeah, thanks, Will. And you talk a lot about this, actually. But like if, if you had to like just say, okay, here are like the best things, like the top two or three things 
uh, or your favorite things that you found about not just working with City Team eSource, but also working with us in general? Um, what, what do you think those those top two or three things would be? I think um, Will, like Will's number one, maybe? <laughs> Will's definitely number one. I honestly, the support, the relationship that I, I feel is is kind of paramount, especially when you're embarking on something that is, I mean, this was so, so new to us. Um, so I think definitely the, the support, because with that, you can kind of make anything, anything work. Um, I am not super tech savvy by any means. I've had Will send me Google Doc links and I just can't figure out how to, why to, I don't even understand. So I call him and I say, I can't figure this out and he'll send it a different way. Um, so I think that, you know, we talk so much about, you know, explaining things to patients in a way they can learn. Will has to explain things in a way that Ashley can learn. Um, and I'm sure that you can do that with all of your sites. So I think definitely the partnership. Um, and then just knowing that our data collection is so complete, is accurate. I have had monitors come, um, one of our trials, it's 100% SDV. And the monitor um, has made comments several times about just how much she loves being able to pop in, see our visits, see what's been done, verify that to EDC. Um, so that I think the ease of that, especially in a world where, um, you know, hopefully we're not having to go completely remote ever again, but where so much is remote now, um, whenever we have remote monitoring visits for, um, we have a trial that was with a dialysis clinic and we did not use, um, I think it was bef yeah, before one state before we'd partnered. Um, so I have paper source. So if they ever need anything, it's uploading to a box and um, verification that way. And that takes time. Whereas if your monitor um, has the read only access to pop into your source, you're not uploading, you're not uploading more, more things, more visits. Um, there is a question in the chat about um, ICF labs, IP disposition forms. So yeah, so with those, we, I mean, that is correct. We, um, we do upload those to subject binders um, to store, but it's, I mean, I've got one of my trials, um, like I mentioned, I think it's 40, 40 pages of source doc before we went to eSource. So the number of binders, um, the number of just pages, it's, you know, you go to print one of those out and hurt your heart a little bit at how much paper you're using. Um, so, so it's been, it's been, you know, you're never going to get away. I don't think from all paper. I do, I do believe that. I, I think that that could be quite difficult. Um, but I think that the e-source option is something to at least help limit what, what we're printing. Excellent. And, you know, um, you know, this was, you know, an investment, right? And so in, in terms of what you got back on that, like your return on investment, what do you think are the top few things um, that you experienced and, and made it worthwhile for you? I think the time, I think the time, and I think um, for me, patient experience is so huge. Um, and I don't know if that's, you know, from my nursing background, I just, it's, um, I've been like in the dialysis world for almost 17 years. Um, so, so patient experience for, for me is, is the number one um, thing that I try to make sure everybody um, experiences. And um I think having a, a more positive, um, easier visit for our patients, allowing them to get some of their day back. Um, you know, even if it's 10 minutes, it's 10 minutes of, amongst how many visits that adds up. Yeah, so it sounds like when you were using paper, like before, just to, just to summarize, like the, the visits took longer, maybe they weren't quite as streamlined, but now you're you know, with eSource, the patient experience is improved, right? So they get in and out quicker, it's smoother, right? You just on your laptop versus flipping back and forth. Mm -hmm. And I always think of some of these these binders like, like as a choose your own adventure book where you're like page 17, no back to three. And it sounds like that's been really helpful. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, thank you. I'll, I'll pass it back to Will. 
Yeah. So I actually, you mentioned uh, the that one of your uh, returns of investment was the quality of care for your patient or the experience for your patient. It's actually what I wanted to get to, uh, but you've talked about it here in a second. But I would like to uh, talk about that again. Um, one of the conversations that we had um, as we were starting to work now at post implementation in Steady Team Resource. You mentioned that your patients actually noticed the difference between collecting the data on paper. Um, and I think it's one of the things that we typically don't talk about. So if you go out and look at blog posts or you look at anything related to the benefits of eSource, um, it talks about, um, you know, uh, data, um, quality of data, uh, making sure that everything uh, is aligned with regulation. Uh, but I feel that in those benefits, the patient is missing. And um, I found that to be very insightful that at the end of the day, the patients come to our sites to, you know, invest three, four hours of the time. But if we're using something that streamlines that collection process, and maybe we're cutting, out, cutting that time to two hours, which means that they can go enjoy and do uh, other things. Or in some cases, I come from working a lot with oncology uh, sites. Uh, where, you know, the patients um, are very ill and they're, they want to go home. So um, uh, I, uh, I was very happy when you mentioned that, Ashley, that you, you, you saw that. And it was something that, to be honest with you, coming from working in technology, and I had not uh, seen it from that perspective. So uh, it shows your care for your patient, okay. uh, your commitment. So... Um, I do have uh, one last question and then we'll get here to a brief Q&A. Um, what are your recommendations for a site that is considering using eSource uh, for their trials? And what does, should they take in consideration before they make that transition? Um, so take into consideration, I, I would present so... When we started, Matt, you had done like a full presentation um, and I was able to share some of that with the doctors who are um, on the, the private practice side of, um, of our research department. So kind of just you definitely want buy in from everybody. Right. Because if you don't have that. Then maybe it's not going to work. So um, I think definitely present it to your entire team. Um, I think we, Matt, I think we did two or three calls, I want to say, before, um, before we signed on. Um, I, I do think that there are certain trials that we um, won't always use eSource for. Um, I think, you know, our, so our site might be a little bit different than, you know, the, the folks who are on the call with us. We're a private practice with a research site attached. Um, we are not in a hospital. We're not in a big facility. Um, we're kind of just standalone. Um, with that being said, we do trials um, where patients do go into the hospital for different procedures. Um, we are in and out of dialysis clinics for some of our trials um, where reception isn't great or um, Wi-Fi is not great. Um, so for those instances, we have a trial, another dialysis trial coming up where, um, you know, I, we won't use eSource for that just because of the connectivity um, troubles that, that we could potentially have. Um, but look and see how much time are you really spending doing your paper source? Um, I would look and see, look, look at your protocol deviation logs. What are you getting deviations for? Um, for my site, when we would look and look back or after a monitoring visit, um, a lot of times it would be like a quick change or something was illegible and not signed and dated. Um, and that was happening um, more than we would have liked. So this was really the answer, I think, for for us. Thank you. Uh, thank you for sharing that. Uh, yeah, it's also uh, uh, that compliance piece, it, it's key. And tying it back with the patient mm -hmm. uh, care, um, it, it definitely should be an incentive for sites to move uh, towards this. Yeah. One thing that um, sites like yours and organizations that are starting to move to eSource, 
I think we're making the, rule, the move at the right time. I think it's going to come to the day where the FDA is just going to mandate for as we become more of a digital world mm-hmm. where this is going to be the standard practice. So I think um, that organizations that are jumping into this now um, are, are ahead and, and and will benefit down the road. So I do want to open up for um, Q&A. Um, I know we had until 45. We're going to leave uh, for five. We're going to do five more minutes just so that we can take a couple of questions. Um, so we take it from there. So I would like to start. So as we publish the Q&A that we have, um, I would like to answer Jessica's question because how long does it take to get started? How long does it take to get started? Um, I know that's one of the biggest concerns that we get in conversations. It's like, how do we get this? And I know you answered your your question uh, on your end, Ashley, uh, but I think there's also a big concern of sites. It's like, how much work do I have to do this? I can't speak for other organizations of how they handle that implementation process, but from our end, uh, our support is um, is dedicated support. So meaning we work with the site from the very beginning to take all of your protocols, um, your CRF guidelines and any other documentation. This also ties uh, to Akram's uh, questions, uh, Mr. Asaf, uh, regarding uh, other documents. So not only do we take the protocol and we take your CRF guidelines, but we also collect any other data that you want us to collect. I'll give a clear example. Uh, Ashley is one thing that we worked on, uh, the way you capture blood pressure. So you said, not only do I need to take the blood pressure, but internally we like to document the cuff size of it, or the cuff size that we're using. So we take those other modifications. And I know of some sites may have like some lab uh, uh, requirements uh, that maybe you're not able to capture at the moment on source, but it does complement what you're collecting from the lab results. Um, so there's we take all that from the beginning and we do basically all that work for the site. As Ashley mentioned, her role here was to QA everything that we give her. Um, we do everything internally and it usually takes us about, I would say good four weeks or so to uh, turn around and, and, and make a project live. We provide all the support and um, and all the dedicated support going forward. So it's not the 1-800 number to uh, get a support desk. It's like you reach the person, you reach the team, and then we're gonna take care of that for you. Um, I know there was another question about site going through FDA inspection. I believe you haven't. I know you just have some monitoring visits, but I will say that um, study team eSource has different roles. So there is a, a auditor uh, and CRA role in a study team where all the information will be de-identified. Uh, so as she mentioned, she has gone through the monitoring process uh, and uh, shared more about that experience. Do you see any other? And and, and well, just uh, on the FDA part, we have had a site that has gone through yeah. that process yeah. and um, it was very smooth. And, and they actually, the feedback was, was positive because it made quite honestly their jobs easier. Uh, I do see a question maybe towards the bottom about after documents are uploaded and certified, what do you do to keep or or do you shred them? I know that in study team, we can certify a copy uh, once it's uploaded, but um, every site's processes is di- uh, are different. So can you spend on that, Ashley? Yeah, so we... Um we do still keep um so the icf i will always keep and i i just think that that's my i feel it's important to keep the icf on site and then also um the questionnaires um i i had asked recently um one of our one of our uh, monitors if it would be possible to put like your um your patient reported outcomes, have those created in one study team, have the patients have their own sign on, kind of like with your ECOA tablets. Um, And that um, monitor had said the sponsor would not allow that, would have to go through like an IRB approval process. I know there are, you know, many steps ahead of that, but just thinking if it would even be appropriate to um, start any of those steps. And and that was was a no. we do have an SOP that says once documents are uploaded and certified and um, uploaded that we do not have to keep them on site. That is an internal SOP that we have. Um, then I still I still do keep the paper ones just just because I'm not quite there just yet. And that's a me thing. That's a control thing. So. 
Okay, well, perfect. Well, thank you so much for sharing your um, your, your process, uh, Ashley. So we're actually going to wrap up here. Armando, I know you do have a question. Uh, what we'll do is we'll um, respond via email. Um, we went over five minutes, uh, but I want to thank everyone. Before we do leave, we want to uh, share a um, handout with you, uh, one pager. Uh, if you're interested, let us know. And uh, also, uh, we 